Hello and welcome back to episode 3 of Stopping the Rot with Liverpool FC on Championship Manager 1997-1998. And yeah, last time out we took on Derby and Kaira Sport in the UEFA, UEFA Cup, I think it was, second round. It wasn't the best result, we got a, we got a, a score draw, got an away goal, but you know, reality was that it was a bit disappointing. I've just seen the postman walking up, I'm going to have to answer the door, bear with me one sec. Okay, no, he knocked next door and it was just in post, so it's all good. So yeah, we had, didn't have the best result against Kaira Sport. It wasn't away, but we got the away goal. We got what we needed, but we do have the second leg. Not on today's episode. We've played it in between as we get to today's episode. And um, our, a little spoiler alert. Today was going to be Tottenham and Everton in the league. There is an out that is a sandwich now between... We did get through Kaira Sport, as you would probably imagine, as you would guess, at Anfield. Uh, we... I think we still rotated, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, that's that next round's game falls in between the Tottenham and Everton game. So the North the North London game and the Merseyside derby. Um, let's have a look at the results. There's been some transfers. Away. In fact, we'll have a quick look at, at the transfer dealings. Um, I've got these sort of scattered along my notes, really. But uh, we did sell... We'll look at the outs first. So we did manage to sell Kennedy. He went to Southampton for 425k. I think... Yeah, I mean, he's gone up in value. He's doing okay, but re realistically, we can do better. We have got better. Yeah, it's, it's a, um, we transfer list him. His pace for a winger and an attacking midfielder wasn't good enough. I mean, for an attacking midfielder, maybe it was all right, but I think we can do better than him. And I think we have, and we could have even strengthened more, but we, we did pull out the deal, which I'll tell you about in a moment as well. We sold good Narsen to Stockport. This one, he's doing very well there, and it's a bit of a shame we had to sell him, but again, I think we can get a younger striker, a young striker that's better than him. He, he looks pretty good. But and he probably will cut it. Probably maybe might come back to bite us. But I think we're punching at a different level. We we can either bring in a better striker or a better young striker uh, down the line. Yeah, it was just uh, to get a bit of space in the team to do that. Really, Jamie Carragher has gone to Fulham on loan. Get him some match experience. Division two. Obviously, we know all about Fulham from the lockdown challenge. I'm happy to sanction that deal, and off he goes. And he's doing very well. Uh, he had one appearance for us in the UEFA Cup that first leg, and yeah, I think that was a centre back, and he we we conceded the goal. So off he goes, gets some game time. And then we sold Steve Harkness to Bolton. Lots of clubs coming from him in the end, including Leighton Orient, who offered me Heidenstrom as part of the deal. Uh, he agreed terms with us, but Harkness obviously chose Premier League Bolton over Division 3 Leighton Orient. Um, but we have gone back in for Heidenstrom as a separate transfer, and actually for about 10k cheaper than what he was worth that week before. And he'll give us some extra support in both defence and midfield. And he's a bit older, so we can have him there as a bit of a backup, a bit of a spare man in a couple of positions, but also while we look to bring someone else more long-term in, and he won't break the bank if we need to free transfer him at some point, which he's a legend. We will not be doing that. Uh, in terms of players in, so we, who did we, who did we bring in first? Um, we went for Roger, uh, Jess Balung or Roger Leung, uh as other clubs bid for him, but it went to Tribunal and he was worth, I think, three million. And the tribunal set it at four and a half, so I pulled the plug on that deal. We, all the transfers failed. No one else has gone back in for him yet. He's doing quite well. I don't know if I want to pay three million for him, and I don't know if um, I, I certainly don't want to pay four and a half for him. But I don't want to pay. I'm not sure if I want to pay three. But if someone else goes for him, we may just jump on it just to make sure we get him and no one else does because he is he is good and he's another option who's not EU, a bit young. We can make him work. Um, but for now, we've pulled the plug. We've got money in the bank if we want to do it. And we also went for Danielson as well, but he was asking for 50 grand a week, which was the max of our board would allow us. And I just don't didn't feel he was value for money. He's very good, don't get me wrong. But at the moment, Berger's doing absolute pieces for us in attack midfield. And it's, would he do better than that? Maybe, but it's a lot of money if he doesn't. So, and that's two foreign spots basically vying for the same one position. So, it didn't make sense, uh, but we had and we had already got Morton Biscord as well from um, OB, is it Odense Bowl Club? I think that is, and yeah, five million on the tribunal, probably overpaid on him again as well. He was probably worth less than the five million. I didn't pay attention, uh, but I'm happy to pay five million for him. He's a very good player. He can play sort of across our attacking two midfield spots. He can play uh, just behind the midfield. I think I think he's got that uh, midfield uh, positioning as well so that's a very good transfer for us but yeah that's the transfer business I, I think or we've got a few others on the go if we've clicked the spreadsheet yeah so Heidenstrom's on his way in but that's our spreadsheet spreadsheet shortlist as we're looking at the moment there's a few players we might look to bring in at the moment not all of them are interested uh, so Jesper Leung's there obviously he's banging them in in the league he's banging them in, in Europe uh, he would be cup tied so that was another reason I didn't want to pay over the odds for him and maybe pay 3 million for him uh, and I'm hoping that uh Heidenstrom will be not be cup tied. He might well be just because we're in that 
sort of level of competition now um, that he would be. But hopefully not. M- Mioldo is possibly another striker, older one maybe we can look at that we can have for a year or two before farming him on, moving him on. Uh, Bakayoko is an option. Abel Xavier in defence. There's a few options we're looking at, but they're not all for this season. We, we want to let the money build up, back up again and see how we go. But game-wise, fixtures, results-wise even. So we obviously left at Chaos Ball. The first game after that would be Bolton. Uh, we finally got the result in this game. It took a while. They went down to 10 men after 26 minutes. We were knocking at the door for ages. Luckily, they didn't score their one shot on target. We were banging away, banging away, banging away. Couldn't get the goal. 65th minute, Mark Owen comes up with the goods. And then on the 74th minute, uh, Macca uh, finally got a goal just to sort of put pay to the result. Uh, West Ham we took on. And about a few days before that, Harry Redknapp was just sacked. So we knew we were coming into a game on a team without a manager. Not always a guarantee. They've got Ishmael. He normally goes abroad, normally goes to France, but he's gone to West Ham this time. I think they had someone else I thought I saw they signed, but maybe that was afterwards. Um, I think it was afterwards. must have been afterwards. Let's have a quick look. No, just Ishmael. Okay. But yeah, again, a little bit of a masterclass from Marco in four goals for him there. I mean, seven shots on target out of eight, not bad. They had more chances than us, but we had the quality chances and the quality, and more possession as well. But yeah, um, Omar's class, and that was with us down to 10 men, so obviously we're going to concede some chances, but this defence held firm. We took a striker off, I think, put one back in defence, because it was Robert Page, um, and then Fowler, I think, got one off the bench as well. His first goal of the season, yes, he did, 66. He come on for Owen, who already had his four goals, done the job, did what he needed to do, and got us the result. Uh, we then took on Coventry, who are always a bit of a bogey team, always a bit of a tough one. Um... They scored two goals and it felt like they had two shots. I, they probably didn't. I mean, it weren't far off. We absolutely battered them and they took the lead. Um, did they take the lead? I feel like they took the lead in this game. No, they didn't. It must have been the game after I'm thinking of a one down the line. But yeah, we took uh, Owen got the goals again, 15 and 23. They got one back uh, and then Berger got one on 79. 4-1 on 86 minutes. Riedler. He's been a, he's gone a few games now without, without the goals. It's almost like he's, his goal projections are getting too high as they've just reined him back in. But yeah, McAllister, before he got injured, got a goal. And then obviously he's someone on our shortlist as well. Uh, and then Noel Whelan grabbed one as well. But 4-2 against Coventry was a, v- a result I was very happy happy with, with them being a bit of a bogey team for me historically. Not always, but they, they do cause me problems. So as you can see here, we beat Kerispor 4-1 at home. We did rotate the team. I think the only player that stayed in the team was Donick Matteo because we didn't have another centre-back. Bobby Fowler obviously came in for his first start, got a hat-trick, which is lovely to see. Um... The draw for this would be Aston Villa, which isn't the best draw for a third round game. You'd expect to maybe get them further down the line. We'll have a look at where they are in the league. Fortunately, it doesn't clash with the league game. So it's not like we've got Villa four times in, in a month or anything. You know, like those old Classico games used to be Barcelona and Real Madrid. They'd play each other eight times and you'd see them like four games on the bounce or something. Luckily, nothing like that. I think we've got them last game of the season and then we've got them about a month after the, the competition that the UEFA Cup round is finished. So we probably won't be able to rotate in that one like we have in this one. We'll probably have to give that a bit more respect. Um, but this was also a very strong team. There's some good players out there, some good young players looking to make their way. But, you know, Jamie Redknapp coming in for his first game. Leon Hardson back from injury. Dundee back from injury. Fowler sort of working his way back. That's still a very good and experienced team. Rob Jones is still in there. Um, you know, that sort of thing. So it was still a very respectful team. Um, we also drew Man United in the League Cup third round. Yeah, which was lovely. Uh, to get them third round. So that's probably a League Cup we're not going to win this season. Um, but we then played Leeds 4-2. Um, this game, I think we were behind. Yeah, this was the one. Somehow we stole a win in this game, but really we were unlucky to be sort of behind any stretch of it. Um, Keith O'Neill, I think that is who signed for them. Is it Keith O'Neill? Yeah, from Norwich, I think. Yeah, he always moves. He moves to Chelsea quite a lot. Or I think Borough I've seen a few times. Uh, they took the lead on 30 minutes and we just weren't really doing anything. Uh, we were having chances, but nothing was coming our way. And they took the lead, 2-0 lead. Um, and I actually, at this point, I had to leave my computer. So the game was running. And I came back and it was like 3-1, then 4-1. But Reedler on 65, Owen 84, Bjorn B on 86, and McManna on 89. We had about six minutes of madness, five minutes of madness at the end of the game, which won us the game. Uh, but well-deserved, I would say, against this kind of struggling Leeds team, really. Uh, and then we went away to Stamford Bridge. Um, played Liverpool, uh, Chelsea obviously, we're Liverpool, what I'm saying. Uh, Patrick Berg with two goals. When I say he's doing things this season, he is doing things this season. He is absolutely phenomenal for us. He's only 23. Tied down for a good contract. I don't think bringing Danielson in would... I thought he signed from Dortmund, not Slavia Prague. 
In fact, there's a big gap there between his Slavia Prague and his Liverpool thing. That must be Dortmund. I'm sure it's Dortmund. Um, but yeah, goal back from Gianfranco Zola. I think to make it 2-1, I think. No, it was to make it 3-1. So we were already 3-0 up by the time they scored and then nothing else happened after the 33rd minute. So yeah, uh, that's where we're at. So we're going to jump into today's games. Just go back to the fixtures quickly. Yes, yeah, so we've got Tottenham at home. <clears throat> And then we've got Aston Villa away in the first leg. And then we've got Everton at home in the Merseyside derby. And then we will be Gavin, Man United again, Aston Villa again. But we're going to jump back for the Man United Sheffield Wednesday tie. We might chuck in the Aston Villa game and do Man United rather than Sheffield Wednesday. Let's have a look at the table, see who's doing what. Uh, English competition, Premier League. So we want to see where Aston Villa are. So they're about 10th mid-table. So yeah, as you can see, we're Aston Man United are kind of leading the pack. We're a point clear. Millions of goals clear, but we've also conceded double. We've we pretty we pretty much scored double what they've scored, but we've also conceded double what they've scored. They haven't lost yet; they're still unbeaten, but they've drawn two. We've not drawn yet, but we've lost one, which is obviously that Arsenal game at the very start, who are still fifth. Everton are up in six. That's not going to be an easy game. Obviously, Tottenham we've got today. There we're looking to put a bit more space between ourselves and them and keep sort of ourselves ahead of Man United, who are away at Southampton. Probably a game they should be winning. Team wise. Not much to change, I don't think. Matteo and Kavame. Kavame's back in. Uh, Page got sent off. He hasn't sort of won his place back yet. Kavame is back from injury, so he's back in. Lee Hughes, Paul Lintz, Jason McAteer, Stephen Gerrard, who's having a bit of a barnstorming season in his breakout season, really. Redknapp's not getting back in ahead of him. Patrick Berger, Stevie Mack, Owen. Owen's ahead of Fowler. Easy at the moment. And Riedler. But Fowler is a very able deputy. He will get his way back in. I'm sure Owen will show those... Was it cheese string hamstrings at some point and have a long injury or a couple of shorter injuries and just give give Fowler his chance? We've got Dundee waiting in the wings as well. Crocodile Dundee there, of course. Um, hasn't quite hit the ground running at Liverpool just yet, but we'll give him a bit of chance to bed in, give him maybe a, a couple of months, a bit of a season just to bed in. Hopefully he doesn't go down the route of real life where he just went a bit off the rails, hit the alcohol, I think was his story. Bit of a tragic story, really. Um yeah, the Liverpool move didn't work out for him. He probably should have stayed in Germany. But it was his big move. It's his big chance. We did totally through Riedler on 26, but they've just equalised. David Howells, of all people, getting the equaliser. Uh, at home, I'd fancy us to win this game. Obviously, Tottenham are doing well this season. They are a good team generally in this game at the moment. They've got Klinsmann. When you've got Klinsmann in your team, you've got a chance, especially in like the 90s, obviously, the mid-90s. At the time, they had him. Peak of his powers. Um, obviously, in real life, they didn't do sod all, really. But... In the game, they recognise him as obviously being the good player that he is. And it looks like Patrick Berger, 69 minutes, LOL, has given us the lead again. Patrick Berger, 2-1. And it's just love to see it as an Arsenal fan, Tottenham getting beat. Just being Spursy. Oh, and it's hit the post. It's one of those chances where it just keeps keeps going and unfortunately doesn't end up in a goal. Usually does. Definitely does when it's against you. Sometimes when it's for you, it does go wide or get saved or get cleared. But Owen... Puts the icing on the cake, 3-1, and that's a fantastic result. Michael Owen, oh, we managed to, oh, a couple of chances late on there for Tottenham. We're not going to make any changes, I don't think, just yet. I mean, we probably should because we've got a game in a couple of days in Europe. And we keep keep him out again, Ferdinand denied there. Obviously, we had him at Monaco, we had his regen, didn't we? Is it Martin Bailey? Absolute phenomenal striker. Probably better than the actual Les Ferdinand, to be honest. He's doing okay. Martin Bailey was better. Martin Bailey was far and away better. Uh, but that's the Tottenham game. 3-1. Absolutely fantastic. And they've signed who they signed. Steve Stone they've got in there. That looks to be about it. Well, certainly it's in the team at the moment anyway. But anyway, we're going to come back for the Aston Villa game, which is only in about two, three days. Three days. So I'll see you then. Okay, we're back on Tuesday. And two things happened in between. We offered a contract to Bjorn Hornstrom, uh, one grand a week to 2001. Happy with that deal. He hasn't accepted yet. He probably will be in the club by the time the Merseyside derby rolls around. And Gianluca Viali was just sacked as manager as Chelsea. I think they are struggling. They do tend to struggle. They're down in the bottom three. Wimbledon have been clawing them. I've seen them getting a few good results lately. They've been clawing themselves out. Newcastle down there as well. With I mean, Shearer's out for a long time, isn't he? So they're missing him. They're missing the goals. It's a good save to do, Newcastle, actually. So they've got a full team, but they've got some good players in there. But obviously, with the best player, Shearer, missing for I think it's five months or something at the start six months I think that was when he broke his ankle or something wasn't it in the season before or pre-season something like that I don't remember exactly but yeah he's been sacked but we're at the Aston Villa game now let's jump in 
how are they doing? How did they do in the last game? Uh, they beat Blackburn three one with a red card on fifty three minutes as well. So not going to be any mugs. Who have they signed? They got someone cup tied. Stephen Glass from Aberdeen. Um, Prozenic, Austrian from Rapid Vienna, hasn't really featured for them. I think that's only just happened, has it? Only signed yesterday. Okay. Draper's missing. That's a big miss for them. York's doing okay. Milosevic isn't really scoring goals as usual. Nor is Dan Collymore. He has got one in Europe, though. But we are definitely... I mean, Jim, Jorgen Nelson, unhappy. Really, you think you should be starting over David James and Brad Friedel, do you? Okay. Whatever you say, matey. Uh, John O'Connor's coming on the bench. Uh, Biscords has to go off at Leon Hardson. And I think other than that, I think we're good to go. Let's jump in. This isn't going to be an easy game by any stretch. Again, if we can just get something in the away leg, be in the game still. Obviously, as good as we're doing, it's still a tough tie. It's still two-legged. Anything can happen. We just need to make sure going into Anfield, we've got something we can take to Anfield to, to finish the job or do the job, basically. Like we did with K Sport, we eased off in the first leg. We got the away goal, one all. From that point, I felt if we would have lost one nil, it'd been a bit tricky. We obviously we went and bat batted them at Anfield anyway, but with that away goal, it just changed the whole dynamic of the tie, whole dynamic of the game. And yes, they scored against us at Anfield. I think they did. I think it was four one, so it put a bit of pressure on. But really, no, we were Riedler gets the away goal. And if we keep a clean sheet and take a goal or two back, ah, oh, it's been disallowed. Um, I take a clean sheet here. I'd take a nil-nil, in all honesty. Um, but an away goal would obviously be the aim. I mean, especially if we concede one. Oh, my God. Right, now we definitely need a goal. A one-all. I'd take a one-all. A bit like AS4. Take a one-all. Take it back to Anfield. Finish the job. I'm I'm confident we will finish the job at Anfield. But so far, we had that goal from Riedler disallowed, but nothing much else has been created. Who missed... The last game, where did Fowler play? I think Fowler played in a, Fowler played in the Owen spot. I think we might have to look at maybe bringing him off the bench. Owen hasn't. I haven't really seen his name. You know, honestly, he's the only one that isn't booked though. No, we're gonna we're gonna take Riedler off because he is booked. Uh, he's had that goal to allow, so his morale might be a little bit low as well. Gerard is going to come out for Leon Hardson, and hmm, I don't really want to change a centre back if I can help it. Oh, thank God for that. David James making a save. Obviously, would eventually go on to play for Aston Villa. Gareth Southgate getting the goal for Aston Villa. I didn't even notice that. I just saw the goal. I wasn't really interested in seeing who scored. But Gareth Southgate, England manager, of course, featured in my series about looking back at the managers and players in the game. Obviously, we've seen that firsthand now. Skimmaker's going to miss the second leg, sent off. How much of a miss that is, I don't really know. I don't know if Draper's going to be back for the second leg, which obviously will make them a bit stronger in that regard. Does Draper coming back make them stronger than Skimmaker makes them weaker? Probably. But a 1-0, 1-0, that is not a good result. Fernando Nelson getting man of the match. I mean, you can't say we didn't deserve to get something out of that game. We dominated the possession. We dominated the shots. More shots on target. We just couldn't score. They had one shot, two, three shots on target, and they scored one of them. They're not exactly prolific goal scorers, and it come from Gareth Southgate. So, I mean, that tells you all you need to be there. Poor result. We really need to pull something out of our arse in the second leg. Is that Stefan Slavikic? Legend on 0102. He's a defensive midfielder here. He's actually a, a defensive midfielder on um, 0102. Not very good pace either. He's a very good player. I don't know what that's about. But um, in three years, obviously, they got their... Three, four years, they got their um, act together and put him right. But yeah, Heidenstrom, there we go. He's in. He is ineligible. I didn't see what round it was till. Maybe when I'm editing, I'll, I'll be able to pick it out. A uh, lot of England players. <laughs> Dominic Matteo getting an England call-up. Uh, against Republic of Ireland, I forgot to say that. Uh, so both teams finished second in their qualifying. They're going to battle out the playoff, Republic of Ireland and England. Not a great game. It, it's going to be, I mean, what was it? Two years before this, 95, was when the riots happened. At, was it at Lansdowne Road, I think? The England fans just went ballistic, started pulling up all the seats. Game got abandoned after 23 minutes. I think Tommy Coyne put, put us in the lead. I say us, Republic of Ireland is my first team. My family were all Irish. Um, but obviously I was born in England and raised in England and stuff so I do have a soft spot for England as well but when the I always say it's an argument with my wife she's always like oh you were born here you were raised here blah 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 I'm like yeah but my family rush oh you were born and raised I'm like I don't not like England I follow England I want England to win I want England to do well but I just 
I have the same with Ireland, and when they two play each other, the green shirt goes on. That's all I'll say. That, that's that, that's never enough. Um, but we've got Everton on Saturday the 25th, so we're back in two days for that. Uh, see you shortly. Okay, here we are. It's the Merseyside derby, first versus seventh. Man United have got Crystal Palace, so we definitely need to keep the, the pressure on there. Tottenham, we have put that buffer now, so we're, what, 11 points ahead of them. Tottenham are 10 points ahead of them. Arsenal have clawed back into them as well, into contention with them. Blackburn, Barnsley, still flying high. Absolutely brilliant to see. And squad-wise, so we're going to bring... No, we'll keep O'Connor on the bench. No, we've got Dyer on the bench. We'll br Page is the better centre-back at the moment. Although, no, do you know what? I think O'Connor is actually the better of the two. We're going to bring Biscord back onto the bench. Hardenstrom's there, but he's not ready to start just yet. And it, we're not chucking him into a into a Merseyside derby. We're not we're not that mean. But and it's away at Goodison as well, so it's not even the the preferred Merseyside derby that I'd be playing right now. I'd prefer to be playing at Anfield for sure. Hopefully, though, by the time it comes to the Anfield game, they'll be lower down the table and had a bit of a slip, and we'll be able to take advantage. But we do need to turn up here. We do need to get a result. Liverpool, uh, sorry, Everton, definitely overperforming by game standards. In the earlier games, I think they were very um, murked up a little bit. Like the the Collier brothers were um, Everton fans, and they they always just do well. Everton. I don't think they were very good if you managed them. I never had much out of them managing them because I used to see them doing well and think, oh, I managed them. They must be really good. Nah, <laughs> but the AI just seems to get everything out of them. And they they finish really high. I don't know if this game they leveled it out a little bit and brought it back down to earth, but they're doing they're doing. They're going above and beyond in in this um this season. I I don't look at them enough to like on my last games with when I'm my Fulham saves. I think they got relegated a couple of times, so I don't think they did that well in my in my lockdown challenge. I think they they went down, took a few years to get back up, and then I think were a bit yo yo y maybe or got up and did okay, but they they got relegated is is the is the you know resounding message in there. But so far two new up McManaman and Riedler. And it's getting to about the hour mark. We're going to maybe look at some some changes because we're going to have some tired legs out there. We've had a couple of games in midweek now. We've got another one coming up. I think we've got the Villa game again in midweek now. Owen, that's it. 3-0. That should be game, set and match. And we can make some subs. So we're going to bring Fowler on. Obviously he likes playing against um, Liverpool, uh, Everton. We're going to take McManaman off because he's booked. And we're going to bring uh, Billy McDonald on. Because Ince is booked as well. And instantly, <laughs> always, three subs, instant goal. Out of nothing, just Madar shoots, Madar scores. You know, but it's probably his first goal of the season. It wouldn't surprise me. He's I remember him playing. He was a ter he was terrible. I think he got a couple of goals to Liverpool. But I think he came from French football. Wasn't very good. I mean, Everton, I remember this season, were particularly poor. Arsenal played them like to steal the title this in, in real life in this season. And obviously, it was the bold to, to Adams' final goal at the icing on the cake and they've got another one what's going on luckily we've made it four to, so that the second goal shouldn't be an issue and now their keepers turn into like prime Lev Yashin saving everything I mean the, the subs we've made don't particularly think they've weakened us I mean I think Billy Mack's going to be better than Ince and it's probably not much in it right now I've never got much out of Ince before and um, in previous situations when Inter Milan I've signed him from Inter Milan or managed Inter Milan and stuff Um so yeah, I, I, I don't know. Gerard's gonna need a break soon. He's but he's had a few breaks in the in the cups. So let's have a look. Madar, he's got five goals this season. To be fair, he doesn't say where his history is, but I think he came from French club, and I think they play in red and white. And I can't picture which one it is, but I'm pretty sure it's from France or, or maybe Spain. Is it Spain? I'm thinking of. Is he like Deportivo or someone? I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you know. I'm not gonna bother looking it up. I'm not that interested. But I remember some of his team. They had Cadamartri. Oh, he's on the bench there. Uh, floating around, they had um, yeah, big Duncan up front, um, Billy uh, Billich at the back. Is it Billy? Yeah, Billich at the back. They had yeah, Meyer in goal. Terry Phelan, Chelsea Island, bit of an Island legend, bit of a marauding. Was he the the ant? Was his name? I think the left back. But yeah, that's gonna be all. Oh, Chelsea have lost again. I wonder who they'll get as manager. I don't think they've got one yet. I don't think I saw a news article saying they've got a manager. No, it's still unknown. I wonder who they'll appoint. That'd be interesting. But how did Man United do? So, yeah, as expected, they beat Crystal Palace. Tottenham, Arsenal lost, and Tottenham won. Okay, against Barnsley as well. But Sheffield Wednesday, who we've got soon, uh, will be this, but beating Arsenal. So, they're going to come into us with a bit of form. So, let's have a look how we... So, we've got Man United next, and we've got Aston Villa. Uh, and then we've got... Have a look, how is Sheffield Wednesday doing in the league? Is it 
I don't really want to do the second leg of the UEFA Cup unless I can. I don't want to do too many of the same teams. The Chipper wins. They're actually doing better than Villa in the league. So we'll we'll do that. I think so. We'll, we'll play off camera. We'll play the. Uh, if I can get the right screen. So we'll play the League Cup, the Villa second leg. So you'll see how that comes in the next episode. And then we're going to do the next episode will be Man United and Sheffield Wednesday in the league. And then hopefully we are still in the UEFA Cup and that will filter down somewhere into the... into the. Well, we're, that's going to be our November fixtures. So hopefully it'll be into December, maybe. The second leg maybe in December. But we'll see. Um, if you enjoyed today's episode, I forgot to mention at the start, please smash that like down below. If you're new around here, hit the sub button. Keep up to date with all the content as it's coming. Still sticking with the schedule. That's the plan. Sort of Saturday, Sunday, and then a Wednesday um, where I can. I'm trying to get these as ahead as possible because like I mentioned yesterday, I'm about to go on a break. So I'm hopefully going to be able to record another one shortly. But yeah, until next episode, episode number four, we'll take on Man United, the big title six-pointer. I'll see you next time. Take care. Goodbye.